Welcome to Chris Park in Shooting Sports. Here is the long-awaited full review of the FX Crown Mark II. Now, I did an FX Crown in Sub-12 over a year ago, and I really liked it. Uh, for me, it was the FX rifle that suited, but after spending so much time with FAC air rifles, I kind of missed the power, so after quite a wait, I managed to organize getting the FAC version. I not only got the FAC version, I got it with 2.2 and 30 cal barrels. So I've done a lot of shooting with it. It's virtually impossible to give you an overall or an absolutely, you know, results for absolutely everything I did, but I'm gonna give you an overall impression of what I got. So a lot about the rifle, a lot about shooting it, and quite a bit about the ballistics too with various different projectile types. FX rate the Crown 2 for 145 shots in 2.2 calibre at full power. I was generally refilling about every 100 shots just because I felt like it gave me more consistency and of course different manometers and pressure gauges from different manufacturers and different bottles in people's trucks and vehicles can be slightly different as well. So I thought it was better to play on the safe side than waste precious projectiles. Magazine capacity in 177 is 22 shots. It's 18 in 2.2 calibre. 16 in 2.5 caliber and 13 in 30 caliber. Um, the rifle actually came to me with a 600 millimeter 30 cal barrel, 30 cal probe, 30 cal magazine, which are all now down here because I've swapped it to the 2.2 barrel as well. I did quite a lot of shooting with the 30 cal barrel. I would estimate I was probably using it for about three to four magazines, maybe 50 shots um, before I was just sort of refilling to 250 bar just for the sake of surety. So 480 milliliter bottle, so you've got a reasonable amount of shot capacity even in the full power. But when the 2.2 caliber barrel came, I swapped to 2.2 because it was the one I had the most use for. The 2.2 is a 50, uh, sorry, it's a 500 millimeter barrel, 50 centimeters. So swapping over, I did cover in another little video, but essentially you just undo the two screws either side, the barrel slot out, slot back in, and the probe on the back has a little screw on top. You just take that out, take the probe off, swap the probe and back that goes identically change magazine for the other magazine as well. So as you can see, I've got projectiles littered everywhere on here. Now on the front, I've put a Sabre Tactical bottle mount, I've put a tier one bipod, um, just because that gives me more versatility and preference for prone shooting as well. Now this is the pepper stock, you can have this in, you can have it in um, yellow laminate, which is like a bumblebee sort of color, a hornet color. You can have a walnut stock, you can have a synthetic stock. I like the pepper laminate. You can also have a couple of different options, hardwoods and pepper in the GRS stock too, which is very, very nice, um, but a little bit more specifically right-handed, whereas this is quite ambidextrous. It's got a thumb hole, ambidextrous from either side. You've got a cheek piece, which is adjustable. Again, that's got lateral adjustment as well. You've also got a vertically adjustable recoil pad. On the top, this has got a 20 MOA inclined Picatinny rail, a little bit more about that in a minute, but we've also got the two adjusters on here. We've got the hammer spring and also the flow adjuster there. What I will say is this, that other than specifically with the 2.2 version, I did not touch these. I'll tell you more about that. You'll understand that why we go along, because essentially, I wanted to leave the rifle absolutely in a fixed state, other than swapping the barrel and the magazine for the different things. I've used exactly the same pressures for everything, it's 250 bar fill, and that's the regulator pressure there. Now, this, unlike something like um, an impact, doesn't have all the external adjustability for regulator pressures and things. That actually made my job a little bit more linear, because other than swapping the barrel and the magazine, as said, I could just look at the difference in the ballistics and also things like the air consumption and the actual usability of this rifle as it is supplied. I use the rifle with a regular uh, Element Optics Daylight um, Helix HD LR scope, which I really like using, and I also used it with this PAR DS3570. Now, one thing I will say is that with the 20 MOA rail, 
it was easy using the daylight scope, but with the pard having a little bit less mechanical or electronic adjustability for overall height, I was ended up with it with a slightly longer zero than I would have liked in the 30 cal. But there is a fact about that in the fact the barrels do move a little bit when you put them in and out. So you might lose zero slightly if you're swapping backwards and forwards between barrels. And of course, the 30 cal barrel just has the single port type. The 2.2 barrel has both the round port and the sort of grill port on the other side for slugs. I actually tried them both on the 2.2 caliber with the slugs and with pellets. And you know what? I didn't find a huge amount of difference swapping to the slug port. So I left it on the pellet port and I was quite happy with the performance. But it was noticeable that when you swap the barrel one way up, the other way up, you do get a slight impact point shift on your zero just because of the barrel having a slight tendency within it. So it's just one thing to be aware of. And I don't think everybody is gonna be swapping barrels every day. You're gonna put the barrel on that you want to use and then set up your scope to use it. I have the versatility of having a lot of scopes, a lot of barrels, a lot of different projectiles. Not everybody will choose that way. You can see here on the 30 cal barrel, the marks left by the four screws on the underside. You'll get the same in any barrel you're using and over time, the screws will then repetitively find these positions. And that means that when you take out and put the barrels back, you do get better return to zero over time. This rifle is 1150 millimeter overall length without the additional sound moderator on it. But generally speaking, the FX Crown Mark II, you basically just take 650 millimeters and add the barrel length of your choice. And that's gonna give you the overall length of the one you're going to use. Couple of things lastly about the crown overall. I like the fact you can shoot it ambidextrous. We've got a nice two position safety catch there which stops it shooting obviously. And I do like the fact you've got the foster connector on the bottom so it's quick and easy to fill because you will use a lot of air in an FAC air rifle. So you're gonna end up with a compressor or an air tank with you or in the back of your vehicle or whatever. So being able to just click that on and off and fill quickly, you know, it's less than 30 seconds really to fill this rifle is very useful. The magazines follow the usual FX process. You rotate that, take that off there, turn the rotor all the way around and pop your first projectile in there and that locks it so you can fill up the rest of the slots. This is the 30 caliber magazine which takes 13 rounds in total. When the last pellet gets pushed through and the probe comes back, you'll hear the magazine click to say it's empty and of course you then take it out and refill it. It won't close the probe once the magazine is used. Well, that's telling me 51 metres. Now you can have this rifle in 177, 22, 25, or 30 cal. I think for FAC rifles, for the ultimate hunting use, probably in the UK, certainly 22 or maybe 25 cal. If you want to look at long distance shooting, I will probably still stick with a 22 or 25 cal. If you want to go with the big 30 cal, it does bring in a difference and you get a lot more power with it. But you know, there are some compromises ballistically because of that. The trigger is a single stage unit, it's fully adjustable and it is incredibly crisp. I'm just gonna do a safe drive fire here because it is an absolute joy to use. I would possibly say it's the best FX trigger I've had on any of the rifles, but that's partly because the sort of forward built rifles rather than the bullpups do have less mechanical complexity, fewer seals, valves, etc., like that. So you kind of a more compact system with less moving parts. The downside slightly is you've got a fairly tall magazine system here, which does mean you've got to use scope mounts tall enough to go over the top of the magazine. I won't close the bolt on this one, but if you pop the magazine in there, you do have to sort of take that into account that you need to go over the top of that. I'm just gonna let this go down without dry firing it. So um, a little bit about the side valve here. If you do change power settings, these have got strong detents on them from one to 23 and they are repeatable. I did a lot of testing on this yesterday. So if you shoot five shots on one and then shoot five shots on 23 power, you will still get the result, exact results you had the previous time. Now, just to tell you a little bit about the results, 
I also did some acoustic measurements. I bought myself a fairly inexpensive acoustic test meter, but it does give me a fairly comparable result from things like differences in caliber, differences with mod on, mod off, differences in power setting. I will have to refer to my notes. So if we narrow it down and I tell you about just on 2.2 caliber with an 18.13 grain pellet, on setting 23, we had a power level of 32.6 foot pounds. And with the moderator off it, on the standard shroud of barrel, we had a decibel rating of 78 decibels. If I put a sound moderator on at that, which is a small sack moderator you've seen in a lot of usage, that came down to 75 decibels. So that's a difference of only three decibels, but three decibels is approximately double the actual audible volume you might experience. If we drop it down to setting 13, which is about halfway, we get to 22 and a half foot pounds. Um, the actual decibel rating is about linear on this, so that was about 70, 273 decibels on that one, but it was raining at the time, so we got a lot of interference on that one. If we drop down to setting number one, and don't forget, only ever change this when it's decocked. On setting number one, we got 13.1 foot pounds, and with the moderator off, that's just with the shroud, we had 72 decibels, and with the sound moderator on the end, which is the little sack here, that dropped to 71 decibels. So it's a very comfortable, very happy rifle to shoot. You're not really gonna have bother with or without an additional moderator over the shroud of barrel. If we go up to 30 cal, which is a 600 millimeter, a little bit more efficient than the 500 millimeter barrel, slightly less portable in comparison. If you look at them in side by side there, of course, if you put a moderator on that, that will be that much longer again. With this using heavy 50 grain JSP pellets again, we were getting 51 foot pounds of energy. And the sound rating, I didn't have a moderator that was suitable for 30 cal, sound rating on that was 75.3 decibels, which is still well below the acoustic threshold where you need to take hearing protection into account, which is 85 decibels. So if you're working in a factory or workshop or something, you've only got up to 85 decibels and anything above 85 decibels for a long time, you have got to be wearing sound and hearing protection. Now, I will be using that acoustic meter at some point with Centrifires to give you a, a, a general example, but they are knocking well over 120, 130 decibels usually. So this is very quiet rifle and it's very pleasurable to use in a hunting scenario. You can also shoot it on the range all day long without any bother at all. Right, you're all gonna be obsessed by what groups it would shoot. I tended to shoot it at 50 meters, but I did do quite a bit of shooting at longer distances on steel. Um, again, it's, it's late September now, the wind is not great, the weather is not great, it's raining, it's miserable. So, let's talk about, let's do the 30 cal first. Um, I shot 30 cal pellets, so you generally use the JSBs, but they were the 50.1 50, 50 grain, I think, in 30 cal. I did like those a lot, they were very accurate, very consistent. The Zan slugs that I had in 30 cal are actually 63 grains, and although they did shoot reasonably well at closer range, they didn't really ever pull in the super tight groups or perform particularly well on steel at longer distance because I don't think they were quite as stable as the pellets were in flight. I would be interested in trying some slightly lighter 30 cal slugs, and you know what? I did. I used some FX hybrid slugs, which are 44 and a half grains, and these did shoot a lot better because they're within the stability and the twist rate of the barrel, which is a smooth twist X superior on the liner. Swapping over to 22 cal and pellets, I love the 18.1 grain JSB exact Diablos. Um, for rabbiting, ratting, and hares, these were my superb first choice because I like the impact style of them uh, and I just find they do the job. When I was shooting at the long distances specifically for just testing ballistics, velocities, and drops at distance, I used these as a bit of a benchmark to see how it would go on to, and then I used various types of slugs. So we had the FX22 slugs, which are 22 grains, so reasonably light. They shot very well, they also shot reasonably well at distance. What I am going to overlay on screen now is a load of ballistic charts, which give you a direct side-by-side -side comparison, with nothing changed on the rifle other than the barrel, of the speed and um, ballistic coefficients of the rifle and how they would react in certain wind speeds. They're all side by side, and just for a bit of fun, I put a two tube rimfire match cartridge as well, so you can get an idea of the difference. If I was shooting specifically for long range, 
I did like the Zan 2-2 slugs. They were very consistent and pretty accurate. Um, I couldn't really make my mind up between the 25 and a half and the 28 grain slugs. I think, to be honest, I'd probably go for the 25 and a half. So if I was going for one projectile for everything, I'd go 25 and a half, just because I think it'll be a little bit more appropriate for, for, for rats and rabbit shooting. But I didn't shoot enough rabbits with the slugs to get any kind of meaningful comparison over the top of pellets. And personally, I still prefer pellets at this stage just because of the actual proximity of buildings and land around which I'm shooting rabbits on and rats on, especially the rats, because I know how these react with surfaces and you do tend to get, and I think that's just one of the reasons that over vast experience for hunting, certainly I do still prefer pellets. At longer ranges on rabbits over the fields, paddocks and things like that and the other, I wouldn't mind either way. And I did shoot a few rabbits with the 28 grain Zan slugs and there was no problem at all with them on headshots because, you know, a headshot is a headshot really regardless of what projectile you're using. It does give you a pretty instant kill on anything. Chest shots are a little bit different. But because my um, rabbits and hares are also used for falconry, I can't afford any kind of lead contamination with them because birds of prey don't like lead at all. They are dead. Right, so uh, here I'll give you an example here of some of the group shot 50 meters. These are with the 18 grain um, 22 caliber pellets. Now this is in the breeze yesterday um, and you sort of talk in groups like this at 50 meters which are representative i think because you know like that one there if you catch a gust you lose it and most of them were actually shot aimed over to the left here because they were drifting over it did have quite a consistent wind generally overall the odd gust pulled them across but i think as a real world representative result shooting 32 34 foot pounds with a with an 18 grain pellet that is pretty good for 50 metres. And what I have to consider more a target than a hunting rifle, because I think if you're one of the target specialists with an FX, you're probably going to look at the Pantera because it's got you know the visual dials on the left side, which is straight in front of you. You've got a lot more external adjustability with the AMP regulator on that one outside. And you can really play around a lot more if you want to do that. But conversely, if you are more the hunter who likes a bit of long range shooting, I do still like the Crown Mark II because I kind of like the fact it comes from the factory pretty much tuned. I didn't have any reason to sort of be concerned over the way it was shooting from exactly the way it turned up with me. So for that reason, I really did like this rifle. You can spend, I mean, in effect, if you're shooting the FX, things like the Pantera or the Mark III, tuning the rifle becomes part of the hobby. Whereas with this gun, you can just kind of ignore that, just get on and shoot it, and okay, it might not be that insane long-range group shooter that the others are, but as a hunting rifle, I think it's a little bit simpler, a little bit more, a little bit more pure in that respect, and I certainly liked it. I put the DS scope on for doing some night shooting, and I really like the DS scopes because they're very easy to set up. Um, but that gave me that, you know, both light time capability and also the filming capability a little bit for the videos too. And you'll see some of the footage with that. So I think that pretty much covers my several months with FX crowns. Um, it's, it's, how do I say it? It's kind of my favorite FAC FX I've shot so far, but that's for my use, for my preferences, because I'm one of those crazy people who doesn't mind shooting left-handed when necessary, and of course that's where the crown fits in beautifully. What I will say is that shot for shot for shot, I shot hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of shots over the FX True Ballistic Radar Chronograph, or not over it, but beyond it, and do you know what? This action is phenomenally consistent for you know velocity, extreme spread, and standard deviation. And I really can't doubt the fact that it's got a very direct short air path on this. And although you've got plenums and lots more capability on some of the others, I think that is part of the reason some of them need a little bit more tuning because it really hones it to exactly what projectile you're going to use. I swapped between probably 10 different projectiles in two calibers with two different barrels. And never once did I think, oh, I need to tune this rifle because it's just not working with this, this projectile. It was. The only thing I really thought was the Zan 63 grain slug in third cal was a bit too heavy for the actual twist rate on the liner itself. And that's something that if that's the kind of projectile you're going to shoot, 
possibly in a Pantera or, a, or a, an Impact, you're going to make sure you get the liner that's going to shoot that big 30 cal 63 grain slug, which is a real lump of lead to have flying through the air, and it's a bit more than you need for rats or rabbits. I would possibly like a little bit more speed with the 2.2, but around 925 to 950 feet per second is about optimum, and it certainly proved it on target. And in terms of the consistency day to day, and the fact I took the rifle out and it just worked. One thing I will say is though, there was a noticeable difference in the um, projectile speed between humidity and cooler weather. And of course at this time of the year, when we're changing quite rapidly back and forth day to day, it was noticeable that there'd be a good 10 to 15 feet per second sometimes, and certainly three or four foot pounds of energy difference between different atmospheric conditions. But that's all part of the experience. And the thing is, had I not had that FX True Ballistic Chronograph, I probably wouldn't have noticed that other than on a supremely technical level. Well, there you go. Those are my experiences with the FX Crown Mark II. I hope to be hanging on to this one a bit more through the winter because I have got a lot more rat shooting to do and a lot more rabbits to control. So this really does come into its own for that. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that review and my personal opinion and personal experiences about the FX Crown Mark II. Please go all the way through to the end of the video because there's a link to the British Shooting Show 2024 to buy tickets. And don't forget to like, subscribe and click the notification bell on this channel because that is what drives the algorithm and makes sure that my channel is doing well. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.